Hello everyone! Welcome to Path of Exile with Eclectic Andrew, a gamer. And last time we did visit the two Bandalords. Let's visit the third one, see what he has to say for himself. See if there's anything he could say to save himself from his wicked fate. Hey, look, the unique monster for this area, Ravalo. Actually, while I was standing here waiting to start this episode, I realized I forgot to do something right here. And this house, and the house below us, both have lore. Lore object, objects in them. So, we might as well go ahead and... Why can't I mix it up? Oh, right. Don't go in there. <clears throat> might as well stop off and read these lore. These lore objects for the... For the funnies. <clears throat> Oh, this is the fourth one. We read one and two a few episodes ago. So it looks like number three is up in here. Gonna lose my mind. Yep, here's number three. The moon was full the night of the black storm. It is full. Oh no. Again. It seems to be on a lunar cycle. They have come for me. They have come for my daughters. Oh no. Ravalo called out while the other skulked and muttered in the darkness. Corin oh, no. went to them, arms open, welcoming. The nightmares told her to. My uncle tried to stop her. Ravalo crushed his skull with his smith's hammer. This cataclysm. I barred the doors and windows, but they screamed like monkeys and beat themselves oh, they bloody went... trying to get Well, this in. looks like a mill. I had no choice. I took my two youngest and fled through the cellar following the yeah, tunnel. Yeah, poor Tani. All we can do is hide and hope. God help us. Uh, and that's Ravalo, her husband we just killed out there. So it looks like he was around for a few hundred years, or whenever this cataclysm happened. That's the thing about this game, it's never really established what the timeline is of the game. What's this one have to say, though? Lunari gone now since it all began. Perhaps I am the only one who still looks upon Lunaris. Lunaris, huh. Her name. Soon, I, I wonder if this is a church. And the moon will go on alone. Oh, it's Tony again. My husband has returned, and he hunts for me. My dead oh, husband. Oh no! Even her young children died. Corin too, and Poor girl. my uncle. Corpses rise and walk and feed. Aww. My girls, they walk now, and feed. God has forsaken this us. This has such a devastating Lunaris effect on the world. Witness. Tonight, okay, I'm gonna. Oh, it's so talking. Yay. My yeah, it does that sometimes in this game to where you can walk away from a lore object and it will keep talking to you a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, all these eternal people died. It sucks. Now we kill them again. Apparently no one's killed them beforehand either, since we got here. Well, anyways, now we are at the Broken Bridge. Another bandit hideout. Lies nearby. And excuse me, I just had to cough him out there. More bees! More bees! Hey, all kinds of monsters over here elementals, monkeys, bandits, bees. Very, very interesting assortment of monsters. Of things to kill. Of experience to gain. And speaking of experience, I do have four skill points now. So that'd be very good to use my skill points on my tree. However, I think I might wait a few minutes. Because I'm thinking we're going to be getting more very soon. I assume whenever we finish this quest with the Bandalords, I'm sure we'll get something. I know the Bandalords offered us power in exchange for helping them, but maybe they'll also give us something else. And sorry if you hear police sirens. There, there's a police going by somewhere nearby. Either on the highway, the road next to the, going across the highway, or... Yeah, sounds like they're gone, so they were on one of those two options. 
I live near the highway. Don't rob me. That's all the information I'm gonna give you. <clears throat> I live near a highway. And never more will you know. Come on. There we go. Uh, holy relic levels up. That's nice. I guess I do like the... Uh, oh, froze me. I do like the... Excuse me. I do like video games for their story and their history that they speak about in the games. Ooh, a waypoint. That's nice. Honestly, like uh, Tales of the Abyss. That's a good game. It doesn't go a lot into the history. It's basically... Excuse me. It's basically just got the two kingdoms, the kingdom and the empire, fighting each other, trying to win favor and follow the code, the moral compass of the score. Follow the prophecy to world salvation or something. Hmm, but Crane's here. And I assume he doesn't really want to talk about salvation. I like that. He wants they to talk about trouble. Like Oak and Alira and their thieving mangroves. Huh. I keep taking what's mine. All right, then. I'm thinking you could do something about that. What's in it for you? Ooh, Beyond Reckoning. Also Skill Jump. Next. Oh, good Skill Jump. The ones like mine here. I like the Reckoning. There's power in there and Beyond Reckoning. Oh, he wants their heads, take too. Take two heads and two amulets. Bring them to me and take half the power. Does that add up? Right for you. Two and two. Plus one. <clears throat> I don't know. Well, if you hate Hell Creighton... You get increased attack and cast speed. 10% chance to avoid elemental ailments. That's like the ignition, ignite, freezing, and chill, and also shocking. Then also 6% increased movement speed. It does sound nice. <clears throat> you will have to fight any party members who do not side with you. If you kill Creighton, you cannot choose to help him. Or if you choose to kill anybody, you cannot choose to help, help them again. You always have to fight them whenever you come back to them if you want to, because as you saw before, we went to Alira, we went to Oak, we talked to them, we didn't make a decision, but if we had decided to kill them, when we re-enter the instance, we could walk up to them again and say, hey, and then they'll go, nah, rah, 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 beat, and try to beat you down. You know, that sounds like a good idea. Let's kill them all. Let's kill the bandit lords. Kill them, murder them, maim them. Well, anyways, Creighton will be joined by a bunch of his bandits coming out of these tents, of course. Of course, why they decide to set up camp on a broken bridge. I guess the only good thing is, as you can see over here, there's not really anywhere to go, so there's no ways anybody can come from that way. But Creighton himself, as you can see, he's using a skill called Flicker Strike, just like the uh, Ghost, the Spectral Corsairs did back in the... Ship Graveyard and Ship Graveyard Cave. And other than that, he just attacks you. Runs away, flickers back to you, but attacks you, run away, flicker, and my minions just killed him. So. Aw, really. like uh, witchy. She likes rats. Because Crane was known as the Rat King, apparently. Very effectively. And, um,. That's Creighton. I'll make sure to grab his amulet. This thing right here. So, always make sure you grab those amulets before you leave. Hello. Goodbye. And I said goodbye to you. Well, you have killed Creighton, but Lyra now continue to harass the Force Gamut. Oh, Airmare! It tells you it, he will reward you with two passive skill points. Gee, I wonder what I was suggesting earlier before. Yes, we can now kill the three bandits and get two passive skill points for doing so. Instead of those little weird bonuses that the, the bandits were offering. <clears throat> now the problem with this wetland area is you have to find oak. It's not always the easiest thing to find everybody, everything in this area. 
because it kind of gets set up differently each time. Like the entrance under that tree root could be on either the left side or the right side. Oak could be on the left side or the right side or he could be in the middle. And Oak can be in the front or back of the area. So it's always hard to figure this area out. Although I think sticking by these little cliff hill areas is a good idea because you usually tend to run into Oak's encampment then. Whether you're in the front or the back of the wetlands. There was, don't charge any. Chickens? Be chicken? Hello, Oak, what do you have to say now? So an enemy of hope has fallen. Oh, Creighton, Creighton was an enemy of hope, was he? Missed. Did you, you not be missed? for a higher purpose, perhaps? Something worthy? Worthy. Like peace? Every day, yes, my he'll say every bandit, for every bandit you kill, the other bandits will say something a little different. Of many. But then they'll also say something a little similar. But if peace isn't <laughs> enough reward for you, bring me the amulet that hangs around Alira's worthless neck. And a little something different. I trust you have Creighton's in hand already. I thought so. He Join wants peace. Mine, will forge us a Give me a peace. Give I. me peace. The strength. Oh, I don't know, Oak. Peace. I don't know. You're attacking the bat, the forest encampment a lot. I don't think that's peace. You're just fighting with the forest encampment at that point. I don't want you being the sole bandit attacking the town. Hey, another skill point. Yay! We're about by a level. Very nice. Uh, Oak will be a little hard here. He uses that sweep, the circle ability that sweeps around him, attacking you. The mortal call, which summons that uh, little symbol there, it makes him invincible. And that war cry he just used is Endurance Cry, which just like the bears, gives him endurance charges and heals him a little bit. And the thing is, Endurance Cry synergizes very well with the mortal call because for the more endurance charges you have, the more effective the moral call is. And a moral call can be very hard to deal with because it makes him invincible. And since he's got those endurance charges from Endurance Cry, he's getting a stronger, more duration on his uh, immortal call. So it really sucks. It really sucks to deal with him unless you have something to just kind of get you over that hump. Oh, Witchy, you think he's an adverse load despot? Yes, I think so too. Grab the amulet. Grab a little wand he dropped. Which would be nice. Ooh, increased physical damage. Yep, that's good. Always got increased crit strike too. Oh boy. What do I do? What do I do now? I don't think I need Summon Raging Spirit. I don't think I'll be using that at all. Power Siphon. Kinetic Bolts, maybe. But I'm going to take off the shield and dual wield wands. So basically that kind of makes my attack a little faster because now I'll be going right, left, left, right, left, right, left, right. And the beat goes marching on. Yeah, so it kind of gives you like two attacks within a... Kind of takes away from the defensiveness a little bit. Like since I don't have a shield now, I don't have the chance to block, as that says there. So... I kind of get hit by more physical attacks. Attack attacks, not spell spell damage or whatnot. On oh, Alira, how to find Alira? Whichever side of the road, you see this is the road. Whichever side the waypoint is on, just walk to back towards the forest. She'll be back there, somewhere. There is another way to find her really easily, but it's she's back here somewhere, behind the waypoint. She'll be here somewhere. We'll find her. Here she is. 
Yeah, you know, all the bandits have the same little way of setting up camp with all the stakes around their area and basically building little forts. Little colonial, not colonial, but that was a different time, but little pilgrim forts, I guess. Although if you watch Pocahontas, the, well, I guess that makes sense because the trees, trees in Pocahontas were like four times thicker than these trees and these are like, this is like one tree cut into three or four stakes here. Now, this was more indicative, I think, of uh, medieval warfare, the types of stakes they'd build back then. Whereas the Pocahontas Pilgrim Fortress stakes, which was just like the stake wall that they have, like a castle wall, only it's a bunch of tree stakes. Eh, but that's a cartoon as well, so who knows. Alira. The King yes, of Rats, King of Rats dead. is dead. And, that big and the ugly oak, oak chopped, down. chopped down. You've made quite the impact around here. Ah, yes, I, I have made quite an impact. You have a powerful aura on you. I bet you would make an impact too if you hit the ground. Storm. Now, <laughs> someone as resourceful as you uh, would surely not have overlooked Oak and Creighton's amulets. The ones like mine here. Yeah, well, I have them. There's power in those trinkets. Enchantment enough to keep my friends and I safe. You and your friends, huh? Give me the amulets. And I'll gladly Are we friends, Alira? Power. You, need you friends want to be friends? Thoughts. You need friends? And believe me, you want I to be a fine friend? fine friend? She looks a little fine. I mean, she's not wearing much there. No, we will cure, kill Alira. No. Uh, that move there, that little ring circle, red circle thing, I don't know. There's no equivalent to it for player characters, but a few enemies have it. It's basically, if there's a dead body, a corpse, sitting around on the ground somewhere, that skill will make them detonate. And detonate dead is a skill that you, that you can use. Although now I got that thing about it, maybe that is detonate dead. Not that I know for sure. Valuable lesson, sister. Sure. <laughs> never let the power go to your head. I don't know, I've never used detonate dead, really. No, because Dead Nate Dead, which is if you hover over the corpse, you'd press the button and it would just blow up. No ring or anything. At least not that I know of anymore. If they've updated that or something. Oh man, it has increased. Oh man. Look at this. And that means I have. Oh no, I can put this here. Do this. And do that. How much has that increased? Oh boy, it's over 200. Yes, it's over 200. Yay! So much damage. Uh, whenever you take off the skill gem for a herald or a reservation spell, always make sure to uh, re-reserve re it whenever you re-equip it. Does anybody have anything to say? Uh, we've killed all the bandits. Yeah. Bandit killing duty has been done. Just the mirror? There's greatness in you. Oh yes, we're great, you've without a doubt. That without a doubt. And whether you've destroyed eh. the bandits for us, maybe it matters a little bit. Ends, it matters not at all. Oh, I'm glad you have your home. I'm very glad for that. And our future. This person's got got angel wings. You say the lords of Larceny wore these yes, they did. Necks? These artifacts and the oh? ancient gateway to the northwest. You think those amulets were crafted the by the same people from? That tree Our cave. Hands. And it appears the brigand's trinkets could form a single whole. Oh, oops, I forgot to look at the amulets. You saw how Crane said it was kind of per part of a puzzle. At this sort of thing. Now, this one seems to fit neatly against here. Well, what does it look like now? And this third one. Tell me, tell me. Like it... What's that guy's name? I'm so sorry, my friend. Are you oh, ready? I'm so powerful now. I feel yes, so powerful. Apparently intact. Remarkable considering for the barest moment there. Ooh, you know, I'm sorry to unnerve you, dude. I'm not afraid to admit There's it. There's a way to unnerve but enemies, of course. Version of yourself. If I were you, I'd dispense with that artifact down the deep. I'm not sure how many deep dark holes there are around here that would be find. safe to put something like that in. But this, the apex. Yes, there's still more it might do. And does anybody really? There we go. 
What troubles you bring? You are a hunter. Yes, I have hunted men. Today you have hunted bandits. No. Tomorrow, when you are restless, will you hunt us? You hunt boar. What are you go. so afraid of me for? Find another hunting you told me to run faster than a boar. Leave us in peace. Well, you hunt men now. Ah. Return if you, you want, want to take Elena's heart. What well, does that make you? Just a coward that would take a lady's heart for no reason whatsoever. Other than to turn it over to somebody else to eat. Or something. Ah, oh, you know what? It looks like we do not have something important. Let's sell these. So I can start picking up stuff again. <laughs> Going. <laughs> as you can see, we still have the sharp and cruel job quest to do for Silk. We lost in the Weaver's Chambers. Go there and recover it. It's in an area off the side of the Western Forest. So we could have done that while we were still there in the Western Forest. Killing Alira. But of course I want to do... I want to go over what all the people say. To find the Weaver's Chambers, go the opposite side of the waypoint of the, across the road. However, just give me a moment. I want to use my skill points, skill points, yay yay. Oh boy, here we go now. Watch this. Watch this. 243. 61 attack time. Yes, I got fuselage. Or fuselage, or whatever it's called. Oh boy, 342. Exactly half a second to attack. I believe with each hand. And my accuracy went up. That's pretty nice. Yeah, all this, all these skill points gave speed and accuracy for wand attacks. If I had gone over here first, I would have gotten more damage. But it's just, uh, I want more accuracy right now. now. As you can see, I can now get the mastery point. And I can get another wand specific notable mastery. Bonus. I'm thinking I'll either go for unnerving enemies when they when I hit them, or intelligence added to accuracy with wands. Although, based on oh my accuracy is not too bad now because it's 98 for plain monsters, 90 for evasive monsters. Whoa, my offhand kind of sucks though. Well, I wonder with that, would that, uh... Well, looks like if I just go off this, it'd either be one dex, one intelligence, or two intelligence, that would get set, uh... I want to say locked, into my accuracy bonus as well. Because I think what, doing that, taking that intelligence is added to accuracy rating with wands... Oh no, it's added to the rating. Oh, okay. That's a totally different beast. Accuracy is a rating by itself, where it's just like the damage, the armor, the evasion. It's a, got a base rating. Your life. It's got a base point system to it. Not just a percentage or whatnot, but uh, I don't know where my evasion rating would be. See, because it's dexterity, it adds two base accuracy, two flat accuracy points to the rating. Ooh, see, I have two attacks per second. Sweet. Oh, here it is. Main hand is 333, so I'd add, I'd have over 500 accuracy with my main hand. And my off hand, yeesh. It'd be just over 300. 350 or something? It's not too bad. Yeah, that might be effective for um, making sure the power siphon hits the enemies. Because all these projectiles have a chance of missing, of course, when they hit an enemy. Or just going by them, I guess. I don't know what the real... I guess as I'm trying to say, it's like Secret of Mana Remake, where... If you hit an enemy and it's set, it will say miss. 
Where as opposed to the Super Nintendo Secret of Mana game, where you hit an enemy and it says zero, that's basically missing. So I don't know if it's a hit the enemy and a... Oh, see, it just did it right there. I hit that one martyr, and he... He... He got hit by the attack, but he took no damage from it. So I guess it is like Secret of Mana, where they get hit by the projectile, but take no damage from it. You just don't get to see a miss or zero in this game, because... I mean, geez, imagine having a hundred or a thousand enemies on screen at once, and seeing all this little damage numbers you could be doing. I do feel that that's sort of missing a little bit in this game. Like, I know you can't deal with the normal enemies, because that would be obsessive and compulsive and annoying and... Um, immersive breaking, because... I mean, look, even at these items, these little layout for the items, people put in item filters to filter out the item drop from showing up on screen to where you have to actually hold down a certain button in order to show all the items on the ground. Because the items just get so ridiculous. And if there was a damage number system in place with this game too, I mean, I think I've seen like maybe Maple Story, I don't know for sure, but some of those action games, they get the damage point system showing on the screen there, and it just is a mess of mess for the eyes. You don't want you don't want a mess for the eyes. I should not be messed with. I mean, imagine you have to be a doctor for quite a few years and learn how not to squish them. I'm making reference to friends, of course. What was it they were crushing? Tomatoes? Grapes? And Monica's like, come on, you gotta squish them. And Tom Selleck's like, I spent years as a doctor learning how not to squish them. Because they feel like eyeballs or something, they said, whoa. Okay. Let me take a look at this item here. Because all these items have a special little... Ah, they are... Synthesized items where they have a broken broken stat on them and apparently whatever you do to get that broken stat fixed it sets that stat to be that stat for sure no matter what you roll or randomize on this item of course I know nothing about how to do that so I'm just going to skip these <laughs> yeah I know I know very little about the synthesis process. As you might be able to tell from my little description there of what it does, what it means. But otherwise, so long as the modifier is broken on the item, it's an, it's an, it's a modifier that will not be affecting you while you have that item equipped. That's all I know for sure. And we have found the weaver's nest. My. There sure are a lot of spiders in here. Oh my god, it's large. Oh, look at that! It really does have Malgar spikes stuck in it. Oh, I'm dead. I've never noticed that before. <laughs> it really did have the spikes st stabbed in its eye. I guess Silk was right, and Groose was wrong. He really did stab in the eye. While well, he ran away. Well, she ran away. That's absolutely hilarious. I really have never noticed that before. There's a spike in my eye. Not my boot. I don't wear eight boots. I have eight eyes. Seven now, because I have a spike in it. Uh, that little, um... What is it? Her spitting attack is basically a skill you get called Viper Strike. I think it's the projectile version, and she's using multiple projectiles, supports with it. You could do the same thing yourself, is what I'm saying. Otherwise, she's just a giant spider. She bites you. She spits viper strike at you. She has a chance of poisoning you. Oh, and this modifier right here, well, that's poison. But this little symbol here, covered in webs. You are reduced movement speed while covered in webs. And you'll want to keep an eye sometimes with monsters for the little squares up here. The little modifiers they do to you. 
because that can be a very important part of why you're losing a fight. Such as with uh, the Weaver here, if you're covered in 20 webs, you're moving uh, 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 like frame by frame instead of like this. There's a very specific boss battle later on where you're also covered in, sp in spider webs, and that would be. We'll get to that sometime soon. Not soon, soon, but sometime soon. Considering how long this LP is going for, apparently, so far. <laughs> That's yes, I took the spike yes, from its eye. My best spear. Yes, the you stuck it in the eye. Of old Mother I think you keep it now. Let the beasts and bandits huh. fear you even more. Fear so is a powerful you, motivator. From one hero to another. Wait. No. Yes, I did you kill the mother of all eight, eight legs. And happy words oh, a prize. Great you kill mother of all eight legs. You need it's like I won the lottery. I got a spike for people to fear me with, and uh, forest, something that he found you along with the spear. Take, yes? What'd you find? Ah, skill gems. Skill gems. Interesting. Do I want any of them? Uh, not these. But since I completed that quest, let's see what Yina now offers as a reward for completing that quest. Oh, that would be so good. And it's only four more damage, that's not good. Because I already get 100% chance to gain power charges on kill, but then four more. 4% more damage per power charge? Eh, I don't think so. Eh, nope, nothing here. Nothing at all. Remember Anybody have anything to say besides Lena? What do you have to say? Piety would have concurred with Eremia's theory about that northwestern ah. ruin. The Val were a powerful yes, civilization, you think she would have, wouldn't she? even the Eternal Empire, and Piety very much wanted to see what toys the Val might have left for her to play with behind those stone doors. Yet we couldn't budge them, not with that giant of a tree holding them fast oh, on their roots. That tree, you the tree roots is holding the door to shut. Problem, or rather, a useful illness. Use the spike to inject the baleful gems calibrated a useful illness? into the roots. One day soon, Piety will find her way into that ruin. You need yeah, to I think it would first. be better if I beat Pai there. You want me to kill Keep the tree? To your My help is yours. You want me to kill the tree? This old mine shall... The Baleful Gem and Maligaro Spike. Yeah, they kind of were. I'd wager these two grotesque... This game talks about marriage a lot, actually. A marriage born the riverbed. The darkness. My advice, In holy matrimony, I now sanctions you to the river. To the wedding bed. The river Don't do that, actually. That's sad. Keep your wits... What? Well, that's not too bad now, is it? Just 34 minutes, and we're ready to solve the root of the problem. To use Malgar's spike and the Baleful Gem to poison the tree, blocking your way in the wetlands. To gain access to the Val Ruins, and maybe whatever lies beyond. And we certainly want to get there before Piety. I imagine there's something deep and deadly and... I said deep. Uh, I meant to say deep, dark, and deadly in there somewhere, somehow. Still alive. Well then, until next time, everyone, take care of yourselves and have fun. Bye-bye.